today, my friend, you can be at home in the fellowship of your Heavenly Father. As we learned the secret of the easy yoke, how to effortlessly do everything Jesus would do if he were in our place by arranging our lives around the activities that Jesus engaged in to be constantly at home with and receiving power from his Heavenly Father. And we're learning that, you're learning that day by day. Today, we're gonna to talk about fasting. What a horrible idea. Who came up with that one? Of course, in the ancient world, fasting was done not simply in Israel, and then later on, not just by Christians, but by people of all kinds of traditions and in all kinds of uh, uh, religious uh, tribes. What a stupid idea. How could anybody think that you wouldn't want to just gratify your appetite all the time as quickly as you could? Well, let's take a look at this. Um, in fasting, here's what it is. Here's the definition. This is from Dallas Willard, Spirit of the Disciplines. In fasting, we abstain in some significant way from food and possibly from drink as well. This discipline teaches us a lot about ourselves very quickly. It will certainly prove humiliating to us as it reveals to us how much our peace depends upon the pleasures of eating. It may also bring to mind how we are using food pleasure to assuage the discomforts caused in our bodies by faithless and unwise living and attitudes, lack of self-worth, meaningless work, purposeless existence, or lack of rest or exercise. I will learn through fasting how I use food to medicate myself or to make myself feel loved. If nothing else, it will certainly demonstrate how powerful and clever our body is at getting its own way against our strongest resolves. There are many ways and degrees of fasting. Desert fathers such as St. Anthony often went for long periods of time on bread and water, although we have to understand that their bread was uh, much different, denser, and more nutritious than what we usually have today. Daniel and his friends had a different kind of fasting. If you know the book of Daniel, you might know they decided rather than eating the foods that were eaten by everybody else there, they would live on vegetables and water for a period of time. So that's a, uh, what might be called a partial fast or a different kind of fast. Jesus, when he was preparing for his ministry, appears to have fasted for a long period of time. We read about that in the Gospels. Why would anybody do that? Food is so good. I love food. Fasting, Dallas writes, confirms our utter dependence on God by finding in Him a source of sustenance beyond food. Through it, we learn by experience that God's Word to us is a life substance, that it is not food, but alone, Jesus said uh, after that period of fasting when Satan said to him, turn the stones into bread. Man, human beings shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Somehow the word of God can nourish us in a real, even literal way. And we experience that in some way as we fast. Jesus also said one time when he was talking to his disciples and they were saying, you know, you got to eat. I have food you do not know of. Somehow to do the will of God, nourish Jesus in ways that I want to learn about. So um, why do we go about doing that? Well, a couple of things that fasting is not about. Number one, fasting is not about weight loss. I know sometimes people who uh, approach Lent and think they will fast some during Lent, and that'll be a good thing because I can stand to lose a few pounds. That's not the idea. For some reason online, I keep running into these days ads for uh, the Swedish program of intermittent fasting. I grew up amongst Swedes. Intermittent fasting was the time that went between breakfast and when you would have coffee and cardamom rolls or uh, almond tarts at 10 o'clock in the morning. We were not an intermittent fasting people. It's not about uh, trying to get my body in shape for uh, summer at the beach. It's also, people often don't understand this, fasting is not a way to try to get God's attention and increase the likelihood that my prayers will get answered. 
Sometimes people will think, well, I really, really, really want an answer to this prayer about my spouse or my child or something I really want. So I will fast as a way of showing God how deadly serious I am and making him more inclined to give me what I want. Like little kids when they are around their mom sometimes and they just keep touching her, mom, 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 and she just capitulates. That is not the idea of fasting. It doesn't turbocharge prayers. Um, uh, Richard Foster in his book, The Celebration of Discipline, writes that maybe the most important text in the New Testament is in the Gospel of Matthew, the ninth chapter. I think it's the 15th verse when some of the Pharisees asked Jesus, how come John the Baptist's disciples fast, but yours don't? And Jesus says, while the bridegroom is present, uh, the party cannot fast. But when the bridegroom goes away, then they will fast. And the idea is that Jesus after his death and resurrection and ascension would no longer be physically present with his followers in the same way. And then they would fast as an expression of longing. Oh, I wanna be with him, I wanna be with him, I wanna be with him. That longing that we feel in our physical bodies reminds us of a deeper longing that we feel in our souls. And fasting can be a time to do that. Fasting is also a time when, when I do fast, I want to take a word from God. Maybe that word for human beings, do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And to think about that, to dwell on that, to uh, ask God directly to give me energy and sustenance for the day, so that in a strange way, Dallas would often say, fasting is feasting. If, if, you go through fasting the way that my little brother used to go through piano lessons, which he hated. And every five minutes, he would run up to look at the clock and see, is the half hour practice done yet? If I go through fasting, is it done yet? Is it done yet? Keep looking at the clock and I eat yet? I'm kind of missing the point. It is to allow those pangs of hunger to come and to drive me back to God. Oh yeah, God, I hunger for you. Help me to hunger for you. Teach me to hunger for you. Another wonderful gift of fasting is it allows me to recognize that I don't have to immediately gratify the desires of my appetites. It is possible for me to say no to my appetite and survive. And maybe eventually to say no to my appetite and even thrive. And so as always is the case with spiritual practices or disciplines, uh, the goal of it is to bring freedom. And here it's to be freed from enslavement to my appetites. And I found many, many years ago when I began to learn about this and to just practice fasting, uh, one of the discoveries that I made was when I would fast on a regular basis, I found that dealing with sexual impulses, sexual temptations uh, actually became significantly easier because my body at some way that I hadn't even particularly intended was learning that uh, it doesn't have to have its appetites gratified immediately in order to survive. I also discovered for some reason, I'm still not sure why, on days when I would fast, I became more aware of how hurried I often am. So these are some of the benefits of it. Now, I know I've talked to numerous folks that will say they have tried fasting. It doesn't work for them. Um, if it doesn't work for you, there are lots and lots of other practices to engage in. But I'll suggest a couple of things today just on a real miniaturized version. Um, when it's time to eat today, just take a minute before you plunge in and look at that food and be aware of your own appetite and your own hunger and that it's possible even for 60 seconds to survive before you plunge in. Today, when you eat, stop eating before you normally would and be aware of the fact that you don't have to eat until you are fully sated. Uh, another advantage that fasting brings is when I'm hungry, it's possible for me to remember in a more vivid way with my whole body. There are many, many millions of people all around the globe who are very hungry today. And I might be able to help them. And if I don't have a meal, maybe I could take the money that I would have spent on that food and send it to help people that are hungry. Or take the time that I would have spent at that food and um, serve uh, other people who are there. Maybe you want to fast today, not so much from food, but from social media. 
Maybe I find I'm enslaved and what's inside my body is I got to look at that. I got to see how many likes I'm getting. I got to see how many follow. I got to see who's living a good life where I would like to be more like them. I got to find some way to outsize my boredom and, and uh, satisfy my craving for stimulation. And today I just fast for that, find out what happens in my life and my mind when I'm not indulging, gratifying that particular appetite. I know one teacher who talks about fasting from the snooze button. And it may be that when you wake up in the morning and a part of you says, oh, no, 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 I got to have just one more minute of sleep to say, no, actually today, as an act of faith and trust in God, I will get up and join God in what he's doing in the world and be part of his redemptive plan immediately offer this day to him, say to him, this is the day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in that fasting from the snooze button can be the heroic minute. We find God in a strange way when we learn that it is possible to be free from the appetites that demand to be fed because we're nourished by more than just bread alone. And if you don't find that one helpful, I've got another one coming tomorrow. Welcome home. Hey, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us here at Become New. We hope that these videos help you to grow spiritually one day at a time. If you want to access our whole library of videos, or if you want to subscribe to the daily emails or text messages that go along with each video, head on over to becomenew.com and you can let us know there. We're also preparing some exclusive leadership content. So if you're interested in that, you can let us know at becomenew.com slash leadership. And lastly, if you've got a prayer request, we would love to pray for you. You can let us know by texting it to 855-888-0444. See you next time.